explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold to seek a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love.
this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus stars burn down and the earth wears out and we stand before the throne with the witnesses who have gone before we will rise and all applaud singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God singing Sing in honor and glory and power forever to our God. When the hands of time wind fully down and the earth is rolled up like a scroll, will the trumpets will As we all go home, singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever. In a moment, we will be like him. He will wipe our eyes dry, take us up to his side, and forever we will be his. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever to our God. Singing blessing and honor and glory and power
Hallelujah. All right. Well, I can guarantee you one thing. Everybody's going to see him. Amen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, it says verse 6, or verse uh, 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Jesus is. And that's what he said to his disciples in Matthew 28. 
amen, in Acts chapter 1, a cloud received him up out of their sight, and it says he comes with clouds, and every eye shall behold him, or see him, or look upon him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail or lament because of him, even so, amen. He's coming. It's not going to be the greatest day for, for a lot of people, but it's going to be the greatest day for some people. And the great day it's going to be for the people of God. So if you're not a, 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 a child of God today, you can be. That's the awesome thing about it. Amen. Praise God forever. You can be born into the family of God. You can't be born into my family. Amen. But you can be born into God's family. And, and that's just the way life is. Amen. But anyway, that being said, I want to I want to talk for the next few minutes from Psalms chapter 78, verses 39 through verse 42. I want to talk about limiting God. And a lot of times the reason that people, we, all of us, at one time or another, we limit God. We really do. Amen. And the reason that we place limits on God is because we sort of can God, I suppose, to our own limitations. And at best, we're very limited. Amen? At best, there's very few things that we can do. But the wonderful thing about God, He can do everything. Amen? There is nothing. There's two different times in the Bible that God asked the question to two different people, is anything too hard for the Lord? He asked that to a woman that was barren. He asked that to a prophet by the name of Jeremiah. And of course the answer is nothing is too hard for the Lord. There's a lot of things that's too hard for me. There's things that's too hard for you. But there's nothing that's too hard for the Lord. Now that being said, I want you to stand all of the building to reverence the reading of God's Word. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 78, verse 39. The Bible says, For he remembered, everybody say that with me, remembered. So God remembers, amen. I'm glad that God forgets. God forgets our sins, amen. But he remembers us, amen. He remembered Noah. He remembered Abraham. He remembered Lot, and he remembers you. For he remembered, God did, that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft, and he's speaking about the children of Israel, did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yet they turned back, amen, and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. That's what we want to talk about there, where the Bible says uh, that they limited the Holy One of Israel, amen. So let us pray. Father, as we come into thy presence now, we ask that you would add your blessings to the reading of the word. Uh, help us for the next few minutes, God. Uh, Amen, to preach the eternal truth that's unfolded in this book that we we call the Bible. Drive back every hindrance out of this service uh, and let every imagination that's contrary to the will and the word of God be gone now and forever, Lord. Uh, and let the glorious light go forth in a great and a mighty way. Uh, let saints be encouraged. Uh, amen. Let backsliders be revived uh, and let sinners be saved and we'll never fail to give the praise, the honor, and the glory for we ask it all in Jesus' name and let the church of the living God uh, Shout amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Now for the next few minutes, uh, we're going to talk about limiting God. Amen. And it's as we said at the beginning uh, 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 of what we're talking about. Uh, amen. The reason that we limit and they limited God uh, is because of their own limitations. Uh, listen what the Bible says in verse 42. Uh, it says they remembered not. Amen. In other words, uh, they had spiritual amnesia. And this is a recipe uh, for spiritual shipwreck. Uh, it says they remembered not his hand. Amen. Listen what the Bible says about the hand of God. In Isaiah 52, 59 and verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. I remember when I first got saved, there's an old guy by the name of Edgar Fultz. He wrote a song that God reached way below the bottom that night. You know why God can reach way below the bottom? It's because it doesn't matter how low you sink in sin. Amen. There's an arm of God 
God that can reach, amen, to the bottomless pit, amen. Give him praise and glory in the house of God. But anyway, amen, the Bible says that the Lord's hand, it's not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear, amen. But listen what Israel done. They remembered not God's hand, nor the day, praise God. I want you to think about that day, amen. And as I begin to study this message and I thought about how that the Bible says that Israel didn't remember God's hand nor the day, praise God. And I thought about this old hymnal, I never shall forget the day, thank God. I wanna tell you my day was a night. I didn't get saved in the daytime. I got saved in the nighttime and on a Friday night. But I wanna tell you, I'll never forget that night. It changed my world forever. Amen, it changed my direction. It changed my home. It changed my destiny, hallelujah. And because of that night, the best is yet to come. But listen to what this old hymnal says. It says, long years ago, when out in sin, I had no peace, no hope within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus, and he gladly set me free. I wanna tell you, there's not a sinner in this world that is free. Yeah, you think you're free to party and uh, uh, go around and do this, that, and the other, but I'm gonna tell you of whom a man is overcome, uh, of the same as he brought in the bondage. Uh, and the only people that is free today, uh, it's those that are freed by the Son of the living God. Uh, hallelujah to God today. But listen to the song. It says, I never shall forget that day when all the burdens from my soul were rolled away. Amen. And it says this, praise God, it made me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it, for he is everything to me. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. At his dear feet, just humbly bow. Confess to him your every sin. He will save and cleanse you, give you peace and joy within. And then it says, when all, I'll never forget that day when all those burdens were rolled away. Praise God forever. It makes me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. I never shall forget that day when all the burdens of my soul were rolled away. It makes me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it for he's everything to me. And you say, preacher, why in the world are you reading us a song? Well, the first reason I read it, I can't sing it. If I could sing it, I'd have sung it. But I wanted you to know, praise God, you're looking at a man. I can never forget what God did for me. But here's the deal, Israel forgot, amen, they praise God forever. And you see the thing that really astounds me about we humans, amen, we're real good at remembering what God tells us to forget and forgetting what God tells us to remember. Amen, we need, we, we need to remember the Lord our God, that there is one God, amen. I wanna tell you something, most of the world's forgotten that. Amen, they think, amen, that Buddha's God and amen. Amen, they think that Allah's God. But I come here to tell, tell you today that there is one God, amen, who is Father of all and one Lord Jesus Christ. And there's one way to that God and that way is Jesus. Praise him forever, amen, to God. Now listen to me. The best way that I know how to remember something is to talk about it, amen, what the Lord has done. Amen, that, that's what that song said. He said, I'm not gonna forget it because because I'm gonna sing about it. I'm gonna sing and shout about it. Amen to God. But listen, amen. We need to do as God told Israel of old to do. He said to write it down, to pile it up in stones for a memorial, a memorial and a reminder, amen. Uh, to your children uh, and, and when your children ask uh, what means this pile of stone or, or why have you got this scripture written over here and why are you always talking about this uh, amen so you can tell your children uh, amen what God has done for you in other words it will serve as a conversation piece uh, listen to what the Bible says uh, amen God wants us to pass on uh, what he's given to us uh, in Psalms 145 and verse 4 it says one generation 
generation shall praise thy works to another. That's what that song just said. It just says, uh, hey, amen. He says, I'm going to, it says, I, I, I never shall forget that day. Amen. When all the burdens of my soul were rolled away, it made me happy. It made me glad. And it made me free. I'm going to tell you something, neighbor. Uh, uh, Christianity and church, uh, it's not a sad place. Uh, it's a happy place. Uh, it's a free place where the Spirit of the Lord is. Uh, there is liberty. Amen. And then it says, praise God, I'm going to sing and shout it for he's everything to me. Now let's go on in this little message. Uh, amen. David said in Psalms 145 verse 4, it says, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. You see, we ought, to be, we, we ought not be worried about anything else except telling people how good God is and what God's done for us. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I was on my way to hell, and because of what God done for me on a Friday night, uh, I'm on my way to heaven. Uh, I was doomed and damned to the bottomless pit, uh, but now I'm on my way to a mansion that the Son uh, of the living God has went to prepare for all of us. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, it says in Psalms 107 and verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We ought to be telling everybody, thank God I'm saved. Uh, when I got saved, uh, there was something, everybody, them old timers, when they, hey, I'm the old timers that the old timers used to be back when I was a young sprout, amen. Uh, thank God they get up and they'd, uh, hey, they'd get to talking about the Lord. Uh, hey, they'd start off the same way. I thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen, I want to tell you something. Uh, you know what they were saying? Uh, they were saying I was dirty, but now I'm clean, uh, I was lost, but now I'm saved. I was empty, but now I'm filled. And I'm on my way to heaven. Thank God forever. And it gets better every day. Give him praise in the house of the Lord today. And David said, let us say that. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And then Moses was preaching to the children of Israel. And in the book of Deuteronomy, he told them in chapter 6 exactly what I just said in verses 6 through 10. He said, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. I prayed a thousand prayers or more for God to scribe the words, his words upon the table of my heart that I would learn not to sin against thee. Praise God. And he said, listen, these words that's going to be in your heart, he said, you need to do something with them. Verse, uh, verse uh, 7, he said, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Are we teaching our children about the word of God and what God has done for us and what God will do for you and what God will do for them. And he said, and thou shalt talk of them when thou settest in thy house. Most people, when they sit in their house, every one of them's on the cell phone. Hey, man, they're looking at Facebook or, hey, man, I'm going to tell you something. I like Facebook probably good as anybody, but I'm going to tell you, I like the book better than I like Facebook because the book will change your life. It's the book of God. Amen. Thank God. Hey, man, and when he says, listen, you need to teach your children. You need to talk about this word with them. When thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou thou liest down and when thou risest up, amen, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and thou shalt, that they shall be as frontlets, amen, between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which, um, which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Israel and to Jacob to give thee great and goodly cities which thou built not. Listen, God's a giver. And you need to tell your children that God's a giver. You, you know why we got a church right here? God gave it to us. Uh, amen. You know why we got a property to build this church on? God gave it to us. Uh, amen. You know why you had health to walk into church today? God gave it to you. You know when you give up the ghost that you're going to heaven, uh, it's because God's going to give it to you. God's a good God, church. The Bible's a good book. Uh, and heaven's a great place. And everybody ought to want to go there. Amen. And the Bible said that God will give you houses full of good things. I'm going to tell you what the devil will do. He'll have you living under a cliff. But God will give you a house full of good things. And the Bible says, which thou fillest not. 
God said, I'll do it for you. And wells digged, which thou diggedest not, and vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. And when thou shalt have eaten to the full, he said, then beware, lest thou forget. Remember what the Bible says? They didn't remember God's hand. Amen. Nor the day when he delivered them out of Egypt. They forgot that. And God said, when you get in there and you get favor and you get blessings and you get materialism and you get wealth and you begin to prosper in life, Amen. He said, Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Listen, there's things that we need to be thinking about. The Bible says in Psalms uh, uh, 1, verses 1 through 3, Blessed, I want to be blessed. I make no bones about it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But the blessed man's delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he's going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth to prosper, the blessed man, the man that meditates on God's word and obeys God's word is a guaranteed success. But it doesn't stop there in the Old Testament. I'm going to tell you the old is not old and the new is not new. It's all the word of God. But in Ephesians to a church over there at Ephesus, amen, Paul said this in Ephesians 5 verses 18 through 20. He said, and be not drunk with wine. I'm going to tell you what laying drunk will do. You'll have no house. You'll have no family. And you'll have no career. Amen. So you'll have an empty house, no home. Amen. You're going to hit rock bottom. But God can get you out. Thank God. And the Bible says, be not drunk with wine. We're in his excess but be filled with the Spirit. I'm going to tell you, amen, I found the new wine. And when you find the new wine, the old wine ain't good no more. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, here's what a Spirit-filled person does. Uh, speaking to yourself. Sometimes you need to talk to yourself. Amen. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns uh, and hymns and, sp and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things uh, unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he didn't stop saying that there, but he told the church at Colossae the same thing. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. It says, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So everything we do we ought to do it in the name of Jesus, right? Well, I'm going to smart off to my neighbor. In the name of Jesus, I'm a jerk. I'm smarting off to you. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to slander my neighbor. In the name of Jesus, I judge my neighbor. You can't do that. Amen. Jesus says, speak evil of no man. Amen. Jesus said, judge nothing before it's time. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus said, be not busybodies in other men's matters. Uh, so the word of God, if you, that word, when it, when it says, let the word of God re rule richly in your hearts, <clears throat> you know what that word means? That word rule there means umpire. How many knows that the umpire is the ruler? I'm going to tell you something. These referees and these umpires, they miss it. And sometimes I believe they deliberately miss it. But it doesn't matter how bad they miss it, they still rule. You can't overthrow them. I can't, let me pause just a minute. Station break for baseball. I can't understand why in the name of God that they don't let that umpire sit back there and let, it, let him call whether they safe or out on home plate. But when that computer puts that little box there and you see that ball is pitched in there six inches off the, off the, off the plate and they strike, I think they ought to not be able to do that. Brother, it's either in the box or it's out of the box. I want to tell you flat out, you're either in God's church or you're out. And if you're out, you're doomed and damned if you don't get in. But I got good news for you today. Amen. The genuine umpire, which is God, amen, he'll let you in. But there's one way to get in, amen, and it's Jesus Christ. John chapter 10, he said, I am the door of the sheepfold. If any man come in by me, he'll find green pastor, amen. Well, let me preach on, amen. All through the Bible, we can see how that man is placed with spiritual amnesia. Here's what amnesia really means. It means a partial or total loss of memory. Amnesia, that's what Israel had. Amen. A partial or total loss of memory. 
Amnesia also means a gap in one's memory. Um, a lot of politicians, if you'll just watch them, amen, and if you'll just look at the clips that's played back about them, they got amnesia because amnesia means the selective overlooking or ignoring of events or acts that are not favorable or useful to one's purpose or position. That's exactly what happened. The news media has got amnesia. They dissect, they delete, and they leave out, but God does not. Brother, God speaks nothing but the truth, so help you God. This Bible is truth. God don't sugarcoat anything. He lays it out there. He lays it straight and narrow. Amen. And if you'll follow God, you'll make it to heaven. But let's look at this. Amen. The children of Israel. I'm going to give you three examples of people that forgot what they should have remembered. Amen. The children of Israel. Amen. They was too soon to forget the slime pits of Egypt, the taskmaster's hardship, the killing of their baby boys, the sorrows and cries. Amen. That they cried out to God. They forgot all of this because the journey from Egypt to the land of promise was a little more difficult than they thought that it was going to be. Amen. They, like us, could shout and sing when the miracles were happening, when the plagues was destroying Egypt, and when the Red Sea closed up and drowned the mighty army of Pharaoh. But now they were facing a waste wilderness. So they, like us, they begin to complain. Amen. But let me ask you this. What is a wilderness when God is with you? What is a wilderness when God is on your side. Amen. So they forgot what they should have remembered. Amen. Because of hardship. And then we have the story of Gomer. This story, man, it's X-rated. I'll just tell you flat out. Praise God. But it, but it, it brings home a truth. And you ought to study this little book by the name of Hosea. But amen. Gomer, the story of Gomer. She was taken by a prophet. Amen. <clears throat> by the name of Hosea. Out of her whoredom, she was a prostitute. Amen. She was something that nobody wants their daughter to grow up to be. And I can guarantee you that. And no daughter in their right mind is going to want to be that either. But she was. Amen. And this prophet, this preacher married this woman that was a prostitute. Tuck her out of her whoredoms. You can read this in Hosea 1 and verse 2. The prophet married her, was good to her, amen. Gave her a home, a family, and love, and a great future. But look what she did. She threw it all away. Just like probably some people, you, you may have not have done what Gomer did, amen, but you've thrown it away. You've thrown your future away by poor choices and, and, and wrong decisions, amen. And you think there's nowhere to go. But I want to tell you something, amen. I want to tell you about a harlot by the name of Rahab, amen. She had somewhere to go. She lived in a cursed city, amen. She was full of debauchery and sin. But I'll tell you what, she called out on God and God had mercy. We got a merciful God here today, church, uh, that loves the sinners. He, he hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. And the Bible tells us, here's what Gomer done. She throwed it all away. She married the preacher. Amen. She had a home. She had three children. Hey, she had love. She had security. She had a great future. And she threw it all away. And the Bible says in Hosea 2 verses 5 through 7, For their mother has played the harlot. She went back to her whoredoms. She that conceived them hath done shamefully. For, for she said, I will go after my lovers. Oh, she remembered those bright lights and those flashing neon signs. She remembered the spirits and the dreams. Amen. And the music uh, and the bars and the nightclubs and the sleazy motels. Uh, amen to God. She said, I'm going to go after my lovers. Uh, and she said, boy, she got it wrong. Uh, she said, they gave me my bread and my water and my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. No, I want to tell you, if you got clothes on your back, God gave them to you. If you got food in your stomach, God gave it to you. If you got health in your body, God gave it to you. If you got a roof over your head, God gave it to you. Amen. If you got life in your body God gave it to you and she said therefore God said this she's going out there thinking she's going to get what she wants out there he said therefore behold I'm going to hedge her up I'm going to hedge up thy way with thorns how's it working for you I tell you what I don't like thorns I don't even like briars 
I don't even like to get pricked by the smallest briar, amen, or the slimmest splinter, amen. Uh, he said, but I'm going to hedge her way in with thorns. Uh, I'm going to make a wall that she cannot find her past. Uh, there's a lot of people in churches, this church and everywhere, that's looking for something they ain't going to never find. And she shall follow after her lovers, God said, and she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but they, she shall not find them. And then, when she can't find what she's looking for because it ain't out there. Amen. Then shall she say, I'm, I will go and return to my first husband for then was it better with me than now. See, you can have it bad. You may have walked into this church and some of what I've just said may really hit you, but it ain't hitting you because I knew you was going to be here. And it ain't hitting you because I'm trying to be mean. It is speaking to you because God wants you to come back home. Doesn't matter how bad you've been. Doesn't matter how wrong you are. It doesn't matter how far away you've traveled. God wants you to come home. Amen. Thank God. I want to tell you something. Not one of my children can do bad enough that I won't want them to come back home. Hallelujah to God. And I'm going to tell you, I'm an imperfect parent, but God is a great father. And God wants you to come home. His fold is home. Amen. And then the third one that I want to talk about was the prodigal son. It was a story that Jesus told about a young boy that left home, wasted his living on rioting and drunken parties and harlots. Amen. And he hit rock bottom. That may be where you're at today. Amen. But listen, there's a way up. There's a way out. And it's Jesus. Uh, and the Bible says in Luke 15, verses 17 through 19, and when he came to himself, see, he really wasn't who he was. This ain't who he is. Laying out with the girls and drinking with the boys and parting it down, that really ain't who he is. Uh, he realizes that. He came to himself and he said, how many hard servants of my fathers have bred enough in despair and I perish with hungry, hunger. He said, I'm going to rise. See, when you're down, you got to get up. You're going to get to where you need to be. He said, I'm going to get up out of this mess. I'm getting up out of this pig pen of sin. Amen. I will arise and go to my father, and I'm going to say to my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. And, 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 and he said, I, uh, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me. In verse 12, he said, give me. But brother, when he hit rock bottom, he said, just make me. Make me as one of thy hard servants. You know, the give me attitude is an entitlement attitude. Hallelujah. One of my superior officers on the railroad, he, he said to me one day, he said, Gary, he said, I can't understand these young guys. He said, they the entitlement generation. He said, they think they entitled to a big check and do nothing to get it. That ain't the way it works, church. And if that's you, you need to go to work. Amen. You need to get up and do something. Make something out of yourself. And my son told me the other day, he said, Dad, you preaching awful hard on people to work. He said, you're going to make somebody mad. The only thing that makes people mad is when you're guilty. Get over it. Amen. The Bible says there's profit in labor, right? Amen. Somebody said, boy, I wish I had that go to work. I'll move right on that. Amen. I ain't got a job. Well, we'll help find you one. You first got to apply, right? A job don't run you down. I had to drive 180 miles to fill out an application to get a job and was only told, they said, son, you've got to have experience. And I said, well, where am I going to get that at? I was applying for a bridge job to paint bridges. He said, well, get you a job at a service station. I said, sir, I want to ask you one question. How can that give me experience to paint a railroad bridge? He didn't have an answer. That was probably a smart aleck question to ask. But two weeks later, thank God, he hired me, and I'm glad. And that was... 40 plus years ago. Let's move off of that. It's 12.05. Give me 8 or 10 minutes and I might be done. But sad to say, it often takes the loss of something before we realize the value of it. Let me explain that. It might take the loss of that job that you complain about until you don't have it any longer. It may take the loss of your health before you realize how blessed you are. Jan, I'll never forget the, one of the times that I visited George, God love him, he looked at me and he said, Gary, you don't know what I'd give just to be old George again. That's what he said. Because he's laying now flat of his back in a hospital room in a bed. He said, I ain't been sick a day in my life. And it hit me just like that. 
See, you don't, none of us can really, va- you don't value your spouse until you don't have them or, or you don't value your children like you should until they're gone. Or, or, or you might not even value your church or your pastor or your worship team like you should till you don't have them anymore. That's just the nature of us. We don't really value stuff until we don't have it. And I don't know how to fix that. But listen, here's the God's truth. This was true in the case of the children of Israel. It was true with Gomer. It was also true with the prodigal son, and it is true with the multitude today. It may look greener on the other side of the fence, but the truth is the only green pasture is the provision of God. Psalms 23 and 2 says, He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. This has always been the tactic of the devil to convince people that there's something greener on the other side. That's how he got Samson to marry the wrong woman. That's how he got David in trouble with Bathsheba. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, that's how he got Adam and Eve in trouble. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired and one to make one wise, he took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her, hus- uh, to her husband with her, and he did eat. Adam and Eve, like a multitude after them, found out that it wasn't greener on the other side. But the other side, when they was kicked out of the garden, amen, they faced hardship, difficulty, and it was full of disaster and terror. In Genesis 3, verses 17 and 18, the Bible says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. I want to ask you a question. Who have you been listening to lately? Have you been listening to you or your spouse or your career? Amen. Or have you been listening to God? Amen. Because you listened to your wife, Adam, and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse 18 says, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Verse 23 and 24 of Genesis 3 says, Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. And then it says in verse 24, So God drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden the entrance, cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now no doubt, friends, I'm about done, that Adam and Eve, when God gave them children, and by the way, if you read chapter 4, you see that they got children, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, (coughs) and then she bore Abel. (coughs) So they have children, they have a family, they have a life. Amen. No doubt that after they got these boys, they would walk by Eden. And while looking at that splint, the splendor of the garden of God and witnessing the flaming sword of the cherubim flaming in the noonday sun, amen, no doubt the children of Adam and Eve, Abel and Cain would say, what is this place, Dad? And these first parents would say to their children, you know what? Cain and Abel, your mom and I used to live there. And no doubt one of the boys would say, but mom, what happened? Why don't we live there now? Well, Adam said, sons, we broke the commandments of God and we dishonored him and we lost paradise. We was kicked out of paradise. How many untold millions over the past 6,000 years have done the same. And now even today are crying out from the pits of God's eternal prison house, hell, because they chose hell over paradise. This is driving home the sobering statement that the wise man of old said in Proverbs 14 and 12. He said, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. It seemed right to eat that fruit because it made you smart. Nobody wants to be dumb or unintelligent. It was something nice to look at, pleasant to the eyes, and something to be desired. Amen. Because it's going to make you like God. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but to end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus himself said in Matthew 7 and 13, Enter you in at the straight gate. 
Why should I? For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Destruction follows the person, follows the broad way. Disaster, amen, follows that person, sad to say, amen, is waiting on everyone that's in the broad way. But just look at the examples that fills the pages of this Bible, God's book. Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, he said, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they're written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Let's just look at Lot, who settled for the fertile plains of Sodom. And he went into that sin-cursed city rich, and he came out poverty-stricken and a widower. Then we have Achan, that former slave of Egypt, taken the wedge of gold and the Babylonian garments at the battle of Ai, and it costed him and his family their life, plus the life of many more innocent soldiers of Israel. Then there's David, another classic example of a man who had it all but wasn't wanted something more, but it costed him the rest of his life. And listen to the words of Nathan the prophet in 2 Samuel 12, verse 8 through 10, 8 and 10. It says, And I gave. And see what David done? He forgot what God gave him. He said, I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wife into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. If that had been too little, I would have moreover given you such and such things. Amen. Nathan was saying, But that was then, David. But look here now. He said, but now, in verse 10, Therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to thy wife. And then there's Solomon, who allowed outlandish women to turn his heart away from God. You can read that in Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 26. Judas is one of the chosen twelve of the Master, but he loved the silver more than he loved the Savior. Paul's preaching companion, Demas, saw something he loved more than the Master. We read in 2 Timothy 4 and 10, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica. Now in closing, I want to share with you what I just said. Lot lost. Achan died. David suffered. Solomon died in shame. Judas hung himself. And Demas loved the world. But never forget what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. You say, that will never happen to me, preacher. Well, that ain't what the Bible says. It says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. None of us, from the pulpit to the back pew, is above falling. We stand by faith through grace. Listen. All of these people had a good pedigree. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Achan was a Jew, a Hebrew, a delivered slave. David was Israel's great king. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And Judas was an apostle of Christ. And Demas was a fellow preacher of Paul. And they all got in trouble because they headed out away from God and if you walked in this building today as they come and get us a song and you're away from God you can be a living witness and testament of this song I never shall forget that day you can be a one that can say on that Sunday morning I come into that church I come into that church miserable empty and lost but I heard a voice I heard the spirit of the living Lord of heaven speak to me and say come home it's about time to come home thank God forever I remember many times being in places that I couldn't get home and I told somebody the other day it don't matter where I've ever went to on vacation I always was looking forward to coming home. Well, I want to tell you, this life down here ain't a vacation, but you can come home today.
Because Jesus is standing with outstretched arms and he's speaking <clears throat> to every person. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. How long's it been since you've really rested? How long's it been since you've been really at peace with yourself and with your God? Well, you can leave here today at peace with God if you'll just listen to Him. Because He said, come to me. <coughs> I got one last thing I want to say before I pray. The last <coughs> invitation in the Bible is found in Revelation 22 and 17. And it says, come unto me. Amen. Come to me, all you that, that thirst. Amen. He said, if you're thirsty, come to me. If there's a desire along and something in your heart saying, there's got to be more to live in than this, come to me. That's the last invitation. Then the last prayer and the last warning in the Bible is found in the 20th verse. And the last warning Jesus said to John, he said, behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. And the last prayer is, even so, come Lord Jesus. So God's give you the invitation. And if you're lost, you can't pray for that, that prayer. Come on, Jesus. You're going to have to pray something else before you can get ready. And that's have mercy on me. There's somebody out there. If God is speaking to you, friend, while this church is praying for you, why don't you stand up, step into, out into that aisle, walk down to this altar, and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm that somebody, God. I'm going to come home. How about it? What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Somebody. Are you that somebody? Lord, speak to that soul. Being done wrong, and there's somebody, somebody out there that's shattered from a broken.